Hello world! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Sinead Braxton and I'm the Travel and Lifestyle Content Creator. Today I am in New Orleans and I'm really excited. This is my first time here and I'm staying in Hostel International. I'm getting ready to head out now to go and get breakfast with a couple of other volunteers and then we're heading over to the conference because Hadiatu she does the opening ceremony at 10 and it's about 8 30 8 40 right now the conference is at the Spanish Plaza so I'm about to go and have breakfast and then we're gonna meet there I'm excited because my volunteer hours don't actually start until noon which means that I get to hear Hadiatu and Onika the Traveler speak so I have my hello world bag with my notebook and I'll have my camera in there. So I'm gonna be documenting this whole experience and I'm super, super excited. The hostel is really cute also. I will see you all throughout the day. Have you ever been to New Orleans? This is my first time. Brought your blanket. Yeah. She came ready with everything. She got somebody. food, blanket. Say hi. That's Angie from Angie Adventures. And Mikkel. Y'all remember Mikkel, we went live a couple weeks ago. <laughs> but we're here, we're all volunteering. We got some goodies in our volunteer bag. Let me just put that there. Oh, we have these really cute bags from Seekers. Oh, and this thing is really cute. This turns into a bag. It's from Global Family Travels. colder than expected. Um, five of these different packing pouches as well as a portable charger. All the pouches they pop out, you can attach them to the strap and wear it as like a crossbody or a fanny pack like I have on. Um, and then in the very back is a dedicated section for your laptop. Um, fits up to two 17 inch screens. Uh, and then it also comes with a pop out uh, Laptop, laptop sleeve, so you can leave the bag and just take your laptop with you. We just launched in November, based out of Ohio, Cleveland. Oh, I'm from Cleveland. What? <laughs> so about oh, two years ago, hey, Cleveland, hey, Cleveland. <laughs> I traveled to London, England. I traveled to Spain, and I saw the ways in which people were living, and it made me thirst for more. This predates Instagram, Facebook. I mean, we barely had the internet yet. I mean, let's be real. We barely had the internet, child. I was still using a calling card from a phone booth to call home. There was no Skype. There were none of these things. Traveling to me, to be able to travel, well, there wasn't a digital nomad thing. You couldn't be an influencer. You could catch influenza. <laughs> could not be an influencer. And so I realized that the only way I would be able to stay abroad would be, at that point, to either join the Foreign Service and become a diplomat abroad or to um, teach abroad and become a teacher. And so that's what I did. I went and I got my master's in education. And uh, then I had an illustrious career teaching overseas. I taught in Hong Kong, I taught in London, England, I taught in France, I taught in Mexico. And um, during that time, people, again, this predates Facebook and all of these social media networks that we know today. I had friends and family who wanted to keep in touch and the way I was able to do that was by starting up a travel blog. That was the beginning of the beginning for me. So I started traveling, I started writing about it, I was working abroad, and all of those things together kind of brought me to, to where I am today. So what's crazy is that um, you said that what got you into travel was to escape. Yes. But that's truly what everybody does it for anyways, whether it's from work, family, whoever, it's just to get away. And you know, I did the same thing. I come from African parents and I was trying to escape too. And my first escape was college. And then after that, I was like, where can I go that's far away that you can't drive to, right? And so I, I feel you 150%. Were you scared to start your blog or was it easy like, 
I'm just doing it to keep in touch. You weren't thinking about it from anything else but that? No, you know, I started my blog in 2005. That's 17 years ago. So y'all in this audience aren't even 17. <laughs> but 17 years ago, in the nascent years of the internet, I just I decided to start a blog. It was on Blogspot. Oh my goodness. I'm really dating myself now. It was on Blogspot. It was janky as hell. The name of the blog was Nikita Does France. <laughs> And it, it wasn't, uh, yeah, <laughs> again, <laughs> hindsight is twenty twenty, right? So and I was thrilled when people other than my friends and family, because, you know, they got sick of it after the first one or two posts. They weren't trying to hear all of that. But I was thrilled when people I didn't know were actually finding my blog and were trying to communicate with me because what I was writing to them resonated. And so it was very much a big community, um, very much like this, this community that Beth and team have built, you know, this wonderful uh, community. So it was just like a group of friends online. And as I started to write about my life, living abroad in France and traveling through Europe and Africa, I was reading blogs from people who were living in Brazil. Blogs, I remember I used to read the blog of a, a black woman who lived in Slovakia, you know, and it just opened up so many doors. So there wasn't th this, pressure of having to write. I just did it when I felt like it, you know, and, and it was such a beautiful time, I think, in the internet and a beautiful time in, in the travel space. For sure. And, and I, I wanted you to ask that because for those that are creators out here, you feel pressure, you know, for it to be perfect. You don't want to write something unless you get a certain amount of likes. And what you have to understand is that somebody is going to resonate. You just have to put your heart into it. And when you put your heart and soul into anything, the right things are going to happen from that, you know, and you've done that over and over again, which has allowed most of us to be able to live through you. We're stalkers. We're all friends. I appreciate We're that. We're loving it. Yeah. So, you know, you said you went and did teaching. What took you from teaching to, hey, I want to do something not next? Like, what, what was that, those steps? What were your thought process behind it? So what you have to understand is that I got into teaching because it was the means to an end for me. I wanted to travel. I wanted to see the world. And those were the means that I had. I didn't come from a rich family. I didn't come from a family where travel was, travel for discovery and education was, was a, a culture, yeah. right? You know, when we traveled, it was for asylum. It was to seek a better life. Yeah. It wasn't to find yourself <laughs> as you had a baguette and, and cheese and wine in front, on the Champs-Élysées. You know, that, that wasn't what it was about. And I got into teaching because I knew that that would allow me to live the life I wanted to live, to design the life that I wanted to live overseas. It became more and more apparent to me, especially, see, I'm, I'm resonating with the wind right now. <laughs> no, but it became, it became more and more apparent to me as I be, you know, I kept on traveling and teaching all this, that teaching wasn't what fulfilled me. Teaching was yeah. only the means to an end. At some point after living overseas for many, many years, it was time for me to move to New York City. And I thought, you know, my students are cool and everything, but I cannot picture myself teaching in New York City. I had gangster's paradise flashing in my mind. <laughs> well, <laughs> And I thought, you know what, this, this is not going to be my life. Yeah. I thought about what I really enjoyed. I thought, what am I passionate about? I'm really passionate about travel, but that's not gonna make me money right now, right? And I'm moving to New York City. What are other things I'm passionate about? And I realized that at the root of it all, you know, having started this blog years prior, I really enjoyed storytelling. I enjoyed writing about travel. I enjoyed sharing my encounters on the road. And by that time, you know, this was 2015, 2016, I was luckily in a position where I was actually making a little money from my blog. You know, people were hitting me up and uh, commissioning me to write for their publications. And I thought, you know, I'm gonna try and make it in the travel media space. And I didn't know exactly what that looked like at the time. You know, five years ago, it was very much in the beginning stages. And so I thought, you know, I have this love of, of travel storytelling. Let me see how far that will take me. And if I'm going to do it anywhere, New York is going to be the place. Because if you can make it in New York, if you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. And so I figured I was going to harness all of these different passions that I had. And I was going to work at building connections within the media industry. And I was going to see where it took me. And almost six years later, here I am. 
I gave myself a year. When I moved to New York City in 2016, I said, you know, I am a grown ass woman with some grown ass bills. So I don't have time to kind of dilly dally around with life, you know. And I said, I'm going to give myself a year to give this a try because I would rather regret having made this leap yeah. than sit down and regret not doing it. I didn't want to look back on my life 20 years later and say, you know what, I should have tried to make it in this media biz. And so I said, I'm going to give myself one year and I'm going to see how far I can take it. And I tell you, there is something to be said about alignment. First of all, like, there's something to be said about giving yourself a, a deadline or giving yourself the impetus to act and to move. That's right. Right. And because I knew that I had this self-imposed countdown of sorts, I really put <laughs> pedal to the metal. And I tell you, within six months, Travel Channel had reached out to me. We live in a time where you don't even need to have internet. You don't even need to be paying for the internet because you can go somewhere where there's a connection that you can use for free and you can make your own show and you can build your own you know, website or your own networks and, and broadcast your stuff for free. Within six months, Travel Channel reached out to me. They had seen, I guess, one of the videos that I had posted on social media. A television station in Canada reached out to me. They said, we would love for you to be a resident travel expert on one of our new television shows. So I had two paying on-air gigs within six months. So there's really something to be said about speaking things into existence, going for what you want, and saying that you're going to do it within an, a, a certain amount of time. So I think like what I took more from that than anything else is that you just made a way. Yes. You gave yourself a time frame. These are the kind of notes that I was saying that you should take because it doesn't matter whatever goal you have in life, these same things apply, right? So you had a goal, you gave yourself a small time frame because if you told yourself in five years you would make it happen, you would have done it in five years. But you gave yourself a short time frame and then you worked your tail off. I did. <laughs> I did. I think in that year, I must have made like 50 vlogs. None of them were good. <laughs> None of them were really good. I look at them and they're cringeworthy. You can still right. look on my, my dusty YouTube channel. None of them were really good. But the point is, is that I showed up. Done is better than perfect. Hey guys, I'm Dominique Jackson. And I'm the founder of Girl Around the Globe. We help women pay down debt so that they can travel the world. I can try some whiskey. Sure. That's what I heard that you are. There's a lot it's better you have to create her hair. Right. Hi, how are you? Hi. Ooh. You know where I need to go? Are you from? You're not from Louisiana, or no. are you? No. Okay. Can you tell me a little bit about this? This is whiskey, by the way. Abby oh, it's, I didn't know what you were doing. So I was like, I'm vlogging. You're vlogging. Yes. That's fine. Um, so this is Abby Solo whiskey. It's named after me. Um, it is a blend of bourbon whiskey and malt whiskey with notes of vanilla and waffle cones. Smells like apricots and has a malted chocolate finish. Um, mm. I am 10 months into selling this whiskey. I created it to celebrate the modern day whiskey drinker. It is a very non-traditional, young, smooth tasting whiskey. Thank you, Destiny. Yes. Right. It really just me crying. She cheers. This wind is merciless. It is. This is good. It's very smooth. Thank you. subscription box where you get like a mystery thing of stuff okay. um, so we have what we have here today is our body balm it's um, anhydrous it, so it has no water in it it's really rich and emollient it smells amazing here have a whiff mm. yes and you can grab a sample grab a sample of it uh, so this that's a best seller our lip balm is a best seller we also have our bars our shampoo and our co-wash bars um, so these larger oh, bars are the equivalent of a 16 ounce bottle but you don't have to get in a fight with TSA because I'm trying to keep a top right. tail right. that's all I'm trying to do right. uh, our smaller oh, bars are the equivalent of a 4 ounce is this a sticker? yeah, yeah please a sticker. take it, take it. Perfect. and the card has a discount on it so like if you want to go on our website we have more products there we didn't bring them all today okay. uh, 
And then anything that you see up here, we actually are selling today, including our clutch. This, this clutch is a vegan leather. It's our Go okay. Clutch Mini. She has that, those PVC windows, so the so they don't have to go they right can see your what's stuff. in it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. If it's our stuff, if it's your makeup, whatever you need, these are going for 36, and then you can fill it up with whatever you want. Okay. On the website, I always tell people grab a clutch, find the combination of products that you love, and then put them on, on uh, subscription. And then put them on subscription okay. and keep filling it up based on how much you travel. This group is like, I'm sure the people are going to get it monthly, but right. um, but you can do it like, you know, every six, eight weeks or something like that. This, you can store your earrings. It also, you can showcase them. You can put your earrings here and your rings there. And then, um, this is part of our trio set. So the trio contains the toiletry bag, the jewelry case, and the makeup kit. And this is, you can actually remove the bag so it's detachable. And then the makeup bag, these are professional grade brushes, which she's been looking for. And then a mirror, and then like a small mesh compartment for smaller items. And then this bottom compartment you can use to store other things like your makeup cleaner, uh, little toilettes. Um, and then she also has the wristlets, one with the card case and one more COVID friendly. <laughs> A mask. And so if you join our mailing list today and you follow us on Instagram, you can get either a free card holder or a free wristlet. Okay. We came to bring the party. And so when you see us, you know we expect you to dance, engage with us, and for us time to forget whatever everything else and just enjoy life. So this is what we do and why we do it. I know you're used to saying Mardi Gras, but in the black community, it, it has always been Carnival. Carnival. Right. But New Orleans being the most African-centered and most African-retentive city in the United States, there's a lot of traditions that began with the enslaved and those who were indigenous to this, to this um, to city. My definition of a baby doll represents the agency of a strong, empowered black woman raised in New Orleans. Through this tradition, I pay homage to my grandmother, my mother, all of my matriarchal line that came before me, black women trailblazers in the city of New Orleans that paved the way the likes of Leah Chase and others, Mahalia Jackson. This baby doll represents agency, audacity. We don't tow no lines. We are empowered. We know who we are and we mean business. We are the spirit of New Orleans. Yeah. And what she neglected to say is that her mother... My mother, as a teenager, my mother integrated the Lowe's Theater, and she was able to get what we call the golden ticket. New Orleanians of color were able to enjoy the movie theater because of women like my mother. So I grew up as a storyteller. I tried to have a normal job and go into the office, and the girls in the office would look at me and say, don't jump out the window. Because I constantly looked out the freedom outside the window. And I had to come to the conclusion that I had to find a way to make a living telling the stories that I love. And so I became a storyteller. Now, becoming a baby doll is just a natural part of that. Because how can I tell the story of black masking traditions and not be involved in it? I decided, and my family decided, that I need to be on the inside uh, of this tradition in order to properly translate it to other people. So that's how I came to be a baby doll. Elena? I am the first generation baby doll by title. Alana and Denise represent two different groups of baby dolls. And so there are other groups, but um, I don't know how many we have in the city, but they each have their own taste of New Orleans. Yes, they do.
it was cold today. It was much colder than all of us had expected. It was like 51 degrees outside today, but the wind was sharp and it was chilly. The conference is an outdoor conference and it's actually taking place on the Mississippi River. My shift tomorrow starts at noon. In the morning, I'm planning to work on a video that I'll be uploading tomorrow and it'll be about opportunities for travel and lifestyle content creators to make money. So that's all. I just wanted to end the vlog here tonight and just say have a good night. I hope that you enjoyed the festival tomorrow. I'm going live with Travel Well with Mikkel. Her and I are actually going to be doing a review of our experience at Wanderfest. So tune into that. That should be super fun. And it'll be linked in the description box of this video so that you can check it out. I'll see y'all in the morning and until next time. Bye.